I'm gonna blend back off this video here that was put up by uh, Elder Karatazar. Uh, the title of this video is Correcting. It's a reaction to this video here that was put up by one of these wacky tacky Christians. These uh, wacky tacky Jesus freaks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Elder Karatazar's video is a reaction to this guy's video here. And he looks to be like an Ephraimite, maybe an Issacharite. Correcting Hebrew Israelite false doctrine. Everybody wants to correct us now. The Messiah's birth. And right, right off the bat, this guy loses. Because he, he mentions Jesus Christ. So right off the bat, we already know he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. But anyway, let's check it out. The birth of Christ Jesus. A Hebrew Israelite would tell you that Jesus was not born of a virgin. He would take First of all, sir, the letter J, you got to do your research. Okay, the letter J did not come about until 1524 by John Trissino, John Giorgio Trissino. The letter J was an extension of the letter I. Now we know that our Lord lived long before 1524. So if you go back, if you were able to take a time machine and go back in time to the time of our Lord, you wouldn't have heard the title Jesus or Christ. What you would have heard, sir, is Jesus Christos, Jesus Christos. Jesus is uh, the Greek way of saying Savior. Okay, Jesus is the Greek way of saying Savior. Christos is the Greek way of saying anointed. When you put it together, anointed Savior. Now, the only thing is this our Lord was not Greek. Okay, our Lord, his nationality was Hebrew Israelite. His nationality was a Hebrew or was a Hebrew Israelite. If we go in the book of Hebrews, it tells you where our Lord came from, what stock he came from, what his nationality was. It was not Greek. So for you to put a Greek title, a watered down Greek title that didn't even exist back then, on the name of the Lord, that already shows that you don't know what you're talking about, sir. Hebrews 7 and 14. Let's read it. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Now, what, tri um, what language did the tribe of Judah predominantly sp speak? They spoke Hebrew. Now, did you have uh, Israelites from the tribe of Judah that spoke Greek? Absolutely. Okay, but the predominant language was Hebrew. That was the predominant language spoke, spoken by the Jews. The Jews, which the term Jew goes back to the southern kingdom, also known as the kingdom of Judah. That term Jew consisted of Judah, the tri three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, also known as the southern kingdom. Now, the Israelites out of the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, as in the southern kingdom, the ones that spoke Greek were the Jews that lived outside of Jerusalem. Okay, they lived outside of Jerusalem. Predominantly, the Jews that lived in Jerusalem and the surrounding areas like Nazareth and areas like that, they spoke Hebrew. Now, the Jews that were scattered outside of Jerusalem as far as um, uh, Turkey, okay, as far as... Um, Spain, you know, the uh, uh, Northern Africa and all of those areas there, they spoke Greek, okay? They spoke Greek. The letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to these different areas, a lot of those Jews, they spoke Greek. Remember, the Apostle Paul was able to speak Greek and Hebrew, okay? We're talking Corinthians, we're talking uh, which goes back to the city of Corinth in Greece. We're talking uh, Smyrna. We're talking Pergamos. We're talking um, 
Uh, we're talking uh, Thessalonica. Okay, we're talking Colossus. Those areas, when you look them up in the uh, map, those areas of Israelites that lived there, predominantly of the Southern Kingdom, the majority of them spoke Greek. Okay? The majority of them spoke Greek. Those were the ones that the Apostle Paul was dealing with. That's why it is written there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek because both, both were Israelites. You just had a group of Israelites that spoke Hebrew. You had a group of Israelites that spoke Greek. You even had Israelites that spoke both. Case in point, Apostle Paul, he was of the tribe of Benjamin. He tells us that in the scriptures. He was of the tribe of Benjamin and he was able to speak both Hebrew and Greek. The three predominant languages back there, sir, okay, <laughs> call yourself trying to correct this. The three predominant languages back there, and I'll read it to you, was Hebrew, Latin, or Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Okay, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. English didn't exist. Furthermore, the, the term Jesus, is not, it's not even a real word. Okay. So deal with that. Like I said, the letter J didn't come about until 1524. Okay? So it's impossible for his name to be Jesus. It's also impossible for his name to be Christ because the correct pronunciation in the Greek was Christos. Jesus Christos. But the problem is our Lord was not Greek. He was Hebrew. We just read the scripture. It's evident that our Lord sprang out the tribe of Judah. Okay? So he spoke Hebrew. So to correctly call his name, you would have to call his name in the Hebrew. As a matter of fact, when the angel Gabriel was sent to, which Gabriel in the Hebrew is um, Gabaya Allah, right? Gabaya Allah. That's in the ancient Hebrew, Lashon Kodash. When he was sent to Joseph and Mary, right? He spoke Hebrew. The angel spoke Hebrew. The message that the angel gave Joseph and Mary was in Hebrew. The message came from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, which sent the angel to Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary spoke Hebrew. Okay? So here's the scripture right here. John 19 and 20. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified. By the way, that's his true name, Yahweh Shai. Not no goddamn Jesus Christ. For the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was nigh to the city. What city? Jerusalem. Okay? And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. So those were the three predominant languages that existed back then. English did not exist back then. So it's impossible, virtually impossible for the name of the only begotten son of the Lord to be Jesus Christ. Virtually impossible. Because English didn't exist back then. Okay, what you would have heard in the time of our Lord is Iesus Christos. You would have heard that. But he was not Greek. He was Hebrew. So to correctly call upon him, you have to call upon him in his Hebrew name. Okay? Let's read that in the, uh, the 20th verse, John 19 and 20. Reading that in the NLT. The place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was near to the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it, because those were the three predominant languages back then, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. No English, so don't come with that Jesus Christ crap, okay? That destroys your Jesus Christ. Let's move on. A Hebrew Israelite would tell you that and if you don't know, if you don't even know the name of the power you supposedly are worshiping, you don't know what the hell you're worshiping. Because it starts with the name. If you don't know his name, then you don't know what you're worshiping. You're no different than that woman that was at the well, and the Lord said to her, you worship, you don't know what. John the fourth chapter. This is why we, we tell we call you guys you wacky tacky Christians. Okay, a lot of you, you have a zeal, as it is written, you have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. That is clearly written. You have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. Remember, 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Let's get that real quick. 
1 Samuel 2 and 3, which says this. And this guy, this guy here, this dude here, he's extremely proud. You can see it on his face. Call himself correcting us. Well, here's a scripture for you, buddy. 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Especially when you're calling on some damn Jesus Christ. That is not his name. You, you failed right there, okay? Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a power of knowledge. And the Most High's name, you see the, the term Lord there, and all in caps in the Hebrew, it's Yahweh. That's his true name. So the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is a power of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. And it's clear you don't have the knowledge. Calling on some Jesus Christ. Come on, man. <laughs> anyway, John 4 and 22. Let's read that. John 4 and 22. I'm going to read to you what Yahweh said to this woman at the well, which, by the way, that woman was a heathen. Okay? Let's start at the 21st verse. She was a convert. Okay? And I'm not going to go into that history. That would be for some other video. But she was not a Hebrew Israelite. She was not of the southern kingdom. She was not of the northern kingdom. She was a heathen. All right? This is John 4 and 21. Yahweh Shai saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? Because she was a heathen. Okay? Ye worship, ye know not what. Right. That's this guy here. He worships, but he doesn't know what the hell he's worshiping. He worships Jesus Christ. <laughs> he worships Jesus Christ, and that is not the true name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father. You worship, you know not what. We, as in us Hebrew Israelites, hey, you call yourself trying to correct us, and you need to be corrected, because you don't know what you're talking about. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, as in the Israelites, beginning with the, uh, beginning with the elect, and really begin with the southern, king, uh, southern kingdom, which is the uh, tribe of Judah. The scripture where it speaks about how the tribe of Judah is going to be like God. Okay? Yahweh Shai came out the tribe of Judah. King David came out the tribe of Judah. The term Jews goes back to Judah. Judah is the head tribe of the nation of Israel. Okay? So there you go. Now, let's get back to the video. A Hebrew Israelite would tell you that Jesus was not born of a virgin. And he would take you to Matthew 1, 23, which is... So, hey, 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 he goes with this uh, virgin nonsense, virgin birth, which is totally ridiculous because when you go in the book of Hebrews 7 and 14, it gives you the, the uh, lineage or what tribe, rather, our Lord came out of. So, if Mary was a virgin, no no man ever had sex with her how the hell does the lord get his nationality how the hell does the lord get his tribe that is ascribed to him which is the tribe of judah let's read it again hebrews 7 14 you see these wacky tacky christians they're arrogant in their ignorance they're arrogant in their ignorance and i damn i dare say stupidity they're just arrogant okay and they worship they they, they just blindly worship they don't know what the hell they're talking about for our Lord to get a nationality, which is the tribe of Judah, Mary would have had to have sex with a man that came out the tribe of Judah. Okay? The, ent the entity that impregnated Mary was a man who came out the tribe of Judah. And that happened to be Joseph. Okay? He was of the lineage of King David. As the scripture have said, King David came out the tribe of Judah. You see? So these wacky tacky Christians, they don't make sense. That's why, if you check it out, Christianity is losing members at an all-time rate. Because a lot of what they say, on what they teach, and before we came into this knowledge of truth, I know speaking on, on my behalf, before I came into this knowledge of this truth, in the summer of 1990, I was involved with the Catholic Church. And a lot of what they said was just, just didn't make no sense. Especially that virgin birth nonsense. Okay? Anyway, Hebrews 7 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So for him to spring 
out of Judah, he would have to be born of the seed of man, as it is written um, in Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 2. Let's go there real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 2. So Mary was impregnated by a man. Mary was not impregnated by an angel or some or what whatever conception the wacky tacky Christian has for the Holy Spirit. They'll tell you Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. No, Mary was impregnated by a man who was who had a nationality, who came out the tribe of Judah. That way the prophecy in Hebrews 7 and 14 would have fit. Our Lord sprang out the tribe of Judah. Okay, that's the only thing that makes sense. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 2. Let's see who carries the seed. Let's see who carries the seed. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 1. I myself also am a, am a mortal man, and a mortal man did impregnate Mary, a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring... And uh, Yahweh Shai was the offspring of that mortal man that impregnated Mary. Uh, yes, Yahweh Shai was the offspring of that mortal man that impregnated Mary. And by the way, that was the firstborn son. Because Yahweh Shai, I bet you, and I know for, for certain that this guy here, this, this individual here, I know for certain he doesn't understand that the Lord had biological brothers and sisters. And I can actually read that scripture where it clearly says, are not his brothers and sisters here with us, as in biological brothers and sisters. The Bible names his biological brothers, all right? Simon, Josies, Jude, and James. He had four biological brothers, but he was the first son to come out of the union of Joseph and Mary. Does this guy know that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 1 and 2. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be, to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man. Of the seed of man. Man carries the seed. So it was a man that impregnated Mary, and she gave birth. And that seed that came out of her was of the line and tribe of Judah. As a matter of fact, Mary's father, Heli, was also of the tribe of Judah. So our Lord Yahweh Shai was of the tribe of Judah on both sides of his family, his, his father and mother. Okay? Does that wacky tacky moron know that? Nope. And my and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. There you go. So man carries the seed, right? So again, it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. There you go. So our Lord came out the tribe of Judah. Now for that to happen, Mary would have had to been impregnated by a man who came out the tribe of Judah. And indeed, that man was Joseph. Does the scripture say what lineage Joseph came out of? Well, Let's read it. Let's see if that's not recorded. Where, where Joseph came out of. Okay, we're going to go to... There you go, Luke 1 and 27. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name... We're going to deal with that virgin part. It simply means a young woman of mar marriageable age. All right, like I said, I'm lambacking off the video put up by Elder Paratazar, but I'm making some pre, pre, preliminary, preliminary, I believe that's how you, how you said it, some, uh, uh, some uh, preliminary, preliminary uh, remarks, okay? Forgive me if I pronounce the word uh, incorrectly. Okay, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary, the house of David. Now, David came out of what tribe? Judah. So Joseph came out the tribe of Judah because he was of the direct lineage of David. And that is why it is written in Hebrews 7 and 14 that our Lord sprang out the tribe of Judah. 
That was his tribe. Okay? So there you go. All right? Um, so let's get back to the video. Bear with me for a minute. 23, which is quoting Isaiah 714, which says, And behold, a virgin shall conceive. And it would tell you that this Hebrew word for virgin. So from here on, I'm going to let it play. And Elder Karadza is going to get into the Hebrew, dealing with the word virgin. All right. Because he, this guy here, he, he, um, he, uh, he says an incorrect word for the word virgin. Okay, you have, um, you have um, uh, Bafwala, which is, an, which is a, uh, the, the word Bafwala is a woman of, um, ma a young woman, which is of marriageable age, right? And you have the other word, bear with me for a minute. For virgin, which is, um, if we go in Genesis 24, okay, if we go into Genesis 24, where it speaks about Rebecca, okay, and um, Isaac's uh, marriage to Rebecca. Okay, Genesis 24 and 16, and the damsel was very fair to look upon, very beautiful to look upon, and old enough to be married, which is why they have the word, um, they have the word there for virgin. Neither had any man known her, okay? So she was old enough to be married, but here's the key point is neither had any man known her. So what the, the word there in the Hebrew for virgin there is quite different than the word in Isaiah 7 and 14. First, let's look up, look up the word. All right. Okay. Bathwala. Bathwala. That's a. Uh, a uh, young woman of marriageable age that has never been touched, okay, that's never had sex. Now, he said, Bafwala, right? He said in Isaiah, Isaiah 7 and 14. All right, let's go to Isaiah 7 and 14. Uh, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. And it's talking about Mary. So let's go to the Hebrew word there. All right. Right. Uh, a young woman of marriageable age that, that have had sex with a man. The Hebrew word there is I, 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 uh, I lama, I lama. Okay. I lama. I lama. All right, that's the the uh, Hebrew word. That's quite different from Bathwala. Bathwala and I lama are two different Hebrew words. Bathwala means a woman, a young woman of marriageable age that has never had sex. That's Bathwala. Ayalama is a young woman of marriageable age that have had sex or that has sex, that have had sex by a husband. Okay? So that is the word that's used for Mary, a young woman that was already being, already having sex with her husband. Because Mary, Mary was quite young. Mary was very young when she, uh, when she, um, wedded uh, Joseph. Joseph was quite older than Mary. 
So she's described as Ai Lama, which means a young woman of marriageable age that is a wife, okay? A man's wife. The word wife just means woman. She was the wife of Joseph. If Let's put it to you this way. If Mary truly was a virgin that had never had sex with any man, the Hebrew word they would have had there is Baktwala. Baktwala. The same Hebrew word that you saw for um, Genesis, right? The example we saw here in Genesis 20, 24 and 16. The damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin. The word we see there is Bakwala. Bakwala. Okay? Far different than Ayalama or Ayalama. Get back to the video. And it would tell you that this Hebrew word for virgin is Anma, which really only means a... Ay Lama. Ay Lama. Ay Lama is a young woman of marriageable age that is having sex with her husband as is the case with Mary, okay? Now, the Hebrew word there for a woman that's young, that has never had sex, is bathwala, okay? So this guy is confused. The word you're looking for, sir, is bathwala. In Isaiah 7 and 14, the word you're looking for is bathwala. But the reason why you don't see it there is because Mary, indeed, she was a young woman when she got married to Joseph, that's the thing. She was a young woman who was married to Joseph. That is why they used the Hebrew word Ailama instead of Bathwala. It's very easy to understand. Young woman, a woman of marriageable age. And so Christ wasn't born of a virgin. But the only problem with this understanding... There's no problem with that understanding. Okay, you just don't understand the Hebrew words. You don't understand the word Bathwala. And it's clear you don't understand the word Ailama, the difference between those two words. Is that this word Alma, the seven times that is used in the Old Testament, it's usually describing a virgin, Rebecca, Moses' sister in Exodus chapter 2. And the even bigger problem that you have is that Matthew was writing in Greek, and he was quoting from the Greek. The word for a woman that has never had sex, a young woman that has never had sex is Bathwala, not Ailama. Let me say that one more time. The word, the word for a woman that is young that has never had sex is bathwala, as I showed you the example in Genesis 24 and 16. Is bathwala. That's the Hebrew word for a woman who's never had sex, a young woman who's never had sex, a total virgin. Now the Hebrew word for a young woman that's a virgin, a, a young woman that has had sex that is, okay, that has had sex and she's a young woman with her husband, the word, the Hebrew word there is Ailama. Basically, Ailama means young. That's where you get the, um, even the word Elam goes back to that, young, okay? Ailama, which means young. And like I said, Mary was very young when Joseph got with her, when Joseph, um, took her virginity. She was very young. She was a very young woman. Ailama. Okay? Not Bathwala. Big difference. Septuagint, which renders this word virgin as Parthenos, which literally... Well, we got news for you. You're, you're Jesus Christ. You won't find that in the Septuagint. How about that? You calling... You calling... A, <laughs> you didn't do enough research. You calling on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not going to be in the Sept, Septuagint. The Septuagint was written in Greek, correct? Well, Jesus Christ is not Greek. <laughs> Jesus Christ is English. Okay, and it's not even a real word. Really. The Greek is Jesus Christos. So how about that? Only means virgin. My Hebrew Israelite brothers, if you don't have the correct identity of Christ, you don't have it. If you don't have the correct name of the one you call Christ, you don't know him. 
You worship you know not what. Okay? You worship you know not what. True salvation. Proverbs 30 and 4. What is his name? Let me show you that. Okay. Let, as it is written again, let everyone that nameth the name of the anointed depart from iniquity. Can you even name his name? No, you can't. You still call on that Jesus Christ. That's not his name. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who have ascended up into heaven who or descended, who have gathered the wind in his fists, who have bound the waters in a garment, who have established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is his son's name? His son's name, as in the only begotten son, the world that the one the world calls Jesus Christ, the one that 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 uh, dude he ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that wacky tacky Christian. And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Can he tell? Nope, because he doesn't know it. City of Christ, you don't have a true salvation. Uh, sir, you don't have a true salvation. You worship, you don't even know who you're worshiping. You don't know his name. You don't know his father's name, which would be the most high. You don't even know the correct Hebrew term for uh, a woman that's never had sex, a young woman that's never had sex. The correct Hebrew term is Bathwala, not Ayalama. Okay? So there's a lot you do not know. So you're in no position to correct our doctrine. Like you, like the video you have here, correcting the Hebrew Israelite false doctrines. You're in no position. And to top it off, you're wearing a hat over your head. <laughs> you're wearing a hat on your head. Let's get the uh, First Corinthians. It is you. You're talking about the scriptures, trying to interpret the scriptures, and you got a hat on your head. Now, what's up with that? First Corinthians eleven. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11 and 4. It says, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. There you go. City <laughs> of Christ, you don't have a true salvation. <clears throat> now I got to respond. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Arachak, Wadash. Double honor to the elder apostles and bishops and the great Muslim that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the old like tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I don't know if he really gathered all his information and fact-checked everything before he did this little short video. The answer is no. No, he didn't. Okay, because... First of all, he would have started with uh, that term, Jesus Christ. This is a message to you, wacky tacky Christians. As soon as you use Jesus Christ, we already know you don't know what you're talking about. And it's all downhill from there. Okay, because the true, the only begotten, that's why I read to you Proverbs 30, the 30th chapter in the fourth verse. What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Okay. This is why the Lord is only dealing with the elect. Okay? The elect the elect will, will surely know the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. All right, let me get 2 Timothy. I think it's 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Is, this, is that it? 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Yep. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Heavenly Father standeth sure, having this seal... The Lord knoweth them that are his, as in the elect. When Yahweh Shai comes, who is he going to gather? The elect, Matthew 24 and 30. And let everyone that nameth the name of the anointed depart from iniquity. Right. So what is his name? It's not Christ. Even though you see Christ there, remember, that was uh, translated in what, 1611 from the Greek. By then... They were using that term Christ, but during the time of our Lord, they weren't using that term Jesus Christ. It didn't exist. 
I read to you earlier, there was three predominant languages, Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Jesus Christ doesn't fall into any of those languages, Hebrew, Latin, or Greek. Again, the correct term would have been Jesus Christos. Okay, Jesus Christos. But again, the problem with that is our Lord was not Greek. Our Lord was Hebrew, and he spoke Hebrew. His father and mother spoke Hebrew. The angel that was sent to his father and mother spoke Hebrew. So right off the bat, we know that guy don't know what the hell he's talking about. He's just lost. He's just another wacky-tacky Christian who's lost in the sauce and thinks that he's holier than thou, thinks that the Heavenly Father is dealing with him, thinks that the only begotten Son is dealing with him when the, when the, when the truth is he's just delusional. This guy here, he's just delusional. Okay? <laughs> he's delusional. Now, if you would put down his pride, right, because he's an Israelite, he's an Israelite, even though he doesn't know it, all right, if he would put down his pride and his arrogancy, then maybe he could learn something, all right? Remember, this knowledge is truth is, is, uh, as it is written, with meekness receive the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. This, there's nothing meek about this guy. He's just proud, proud in his ignorance. And if he doesn't repent, he will be destroyed. There's no doubt about that. Okay? Video. Call himself the bucket. You know, our doctrine in which uh, we teach that the Lord was born of actual seed through his father line, which would make him a Judite. Exactly. That's how he got his tribe. Clearly, we read Hebrews 7 and 14. It clearly tells us the nationality of our Lord. He came out the tribe of Judah. How the hell could he get that that uh, that nationality if he wasn't born of a man? If he wasn't born of a mortal man? Okay, and he was born of a mortal man. His name was Joseph, who impregnated Mary. Joseph came out the house and lineage of David, which David came out the tribe of Judah. I mean, it's not hard to understand, but. These Jesus freaks, they insist on saying that, that, that some unseen entity impregnated Mary, which doesn't make any sense. And by the way, that would have been adultery because Mary was promised to Joseph. The only one that should have impregnated Mary was Joseph. Not no foreign entity, not no angel in heaven. No, Mary's husband was supposed to impregnate Mary, which Mary's husband was Joseph. Mary was promised to Joseph, okay? So if any other entity would have impregnated Mary, that would have been adultery. But they don't, they don't understand that. The wacky-tacky Christian, they don't understand that concept. <laughs> a descendant of David, which would mean that he came from a genealogy. Um, he's insisting that when you read Matthew, the first chapter, the 23rd verse, where it talks about, you know, a virgin shall conceive and have a son. And it's quoting prophet Isaiah in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse. Then uh, what he does is he posts, he posts up these different precepts. And he says that because the New Testament was written in Greek. Then I mean that all these different words for Ilama in the Hebrew all corresponds with the Greek word Parthenos. And he's using the incorrect word to describe a, a young woman that's a perpetual virgin and has never had sex with any man. It's not Ilama, it's Bathwala. So it's clear he, he didn't. Because. Uh, it's clear he didn't. Before he did that video, he didn't. Uh, fact check his facts okay that's very clear the word that's being translated in the greek for the word virgin is actually parthenos then that would mean that every time that i lama is used in the old testament it's talking about parthenos which is basically meaning an actual virgin a woman who hasn't been married or touched but uh, this yeah, is Parthenos in the Greek, and in the Hebrew would have been Bathwala, not Ayalama. I believe the Greek word for 
uh, that would match Ilama is Nianus. Okay, if I am not mistaken. Let me see. So you have Parthenos and you have Nianus. Nianus. Okay, Nianus. What does Nianus mean? It says young man, but it's also young woman. type this in for a young woman. See that's Hebrew. My llama. There you go. What is the Greek word young for young woman? The Septuagint translates most occurrences of I llama. That would be the Hebrew for young woman of a marriageable age, and that woman is married, as is the case of Mer Mary, into a generic word, Nianus, meaning young woman. Okay, Parthenos is the uh, Greek one for, for a woman that is a young woman that's never had sex. Okay, so you have Parthenos and you have Nianus in the Greek. In the Hebrew, you have Bathwala and Ailama. Okay, let's go back to this. This is where he messes up at because, and, I, and I'm going to just go to the first scripture just to give the example. This is why you got to go into the Hebrew. That's the original source. Before the New Testament was created, you had the law and the prophets. And what language was the law and the prophets written in? It was not written in the Greek originally. It was the Hebrew. So what does the text say in Hebrew? And that's how we get the true understanding. All right. So uh, Genesis 24, 43. Let me just type in Parthenos and Nianus. Parthenos or Parthenos. Forgive me for my lack of spelling. Parthenos and Nianus. Nianus. Okay, let's see what comes up. What does Parthenos mean? You see, virgin. An epithet meaning virgin, as in a young woman that's never had sex. Okay. Now remember, Nianus also means a young woman. So what's the difference? One has one has had sex, the other one hasn't. That's the difference. Let's see if the word Ilama is used in Genesis 24. Nope. This is uh, Genesis 24. And this is dealing with uh, Rebecca. Genesis 24, and uh, starting at 15, it says, And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, 
with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. A virgin, neither had any man known her. So this is an actual virgin. She, she was untouched, right? And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So let's, that, let, let's hold that down. And let's go back to the clip. Now listen carefully, listen carefully to what he actually says. That this Hebrew word for virgin is Alma, which really only means a young woman, a woman of marriageable age. And so Christ wasn't born. Yeah, young woman of marriageable age. Right? Ailama. Or Ailama. The, the word you're looking for to justify your Mary being a, a virgin that's never had sex but somehow was able to bring forth a seed, as in a son. The Hebrew word you're looking for is Bathwala. But that's not the word that's there for Isaiah 4, 7, 14. The word that's there is Ailama, which means a young woman of marriageable age has had sex, as is the case with Mary. Of a virgin. But the only problem with this understanding is that this word Alma, the seven times that is used in the Old Testament, it's usually describing a virgin. So the, he gives the list of precepts that, that uses the term or the, 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 the Hebrew word Ilama, right? So I went to the very first scripture, and I already know what well, the Hebrew word is. Even in songs, he has songs of Solomon, that would be songs of Solomon 1 and 3. That was a metaphor, man. So he gave that precept. That was a metaphor. That wasn't talking about an actual woman. Songs of Solomon 1 and 3. All right, yeah. <laughs> Songs of Solomon 1 and 3. Because of, the, because of the Savior of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. It's not talking about actual virgins. It's not even talking about actual women. It's a metaphor for the men of the Lord. The men of the Lord, are con um, they're considered as virgins because they, they are untouched by any other philosophy. You know what backed that up? Let's go uh, somewhere in Revelation for the uh, They are virgins. Let's get that revelation. There we go. So, again, this is a metaphor. The same thing as Song of Solomon 1 and 3 is a metaphor. Therefore, do the virgins love thee? That could line up with Revelation 14 and 4. It's not talking about an actual woman, even though you see the word virgin used there. In that case, it's used as a metaphor. This guy is steady trying to correct us. <laughs> Revelation 14 and 4. These are they which are which were not defiled with women. What's another title for the, those individuals? Elect men. The elect men of Yahweh Shimei Shai. That's them. They're compared. Remember, the Lord said he's married unto us. So we're likened unto a woman. Let's get that in Jeremiah 6 and 2. Jeremiah 6 and 2. Let's read that. Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of zion to a calmly and delicate woman let's go from there because we're married unto the heavenly father the one i really want is isaiah 3 and 14 i believe it is isaiah 3 and 14 let's read that nope i'm sorry i got the wrong scripture jeremiah 3 and 14 let's read that jeremiah 3 and 14 it says this turn O backsliding children save the save the lord his name is Yahweh, for I am married unto you. See? So he's married unto us, us men, the elect men. It begins, everything starts with the elect of the nation of Israel. He's married unto us. How is he married unto us? Through this knowledge, this truth. The word married just means joined together. That's how we're joined to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, through this gospel. So he's married unto us. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family and i will bring you to zion that's isaiah 14 and 1 when the lord gathers his elect and he's going to bring them back to israel isaiah 14 and 1 all right so 
So, uh, Revelation 14 and 4, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. For they are virgins, as in what? They're untouched by any other wayward philosophy. They only know one philosophy, and that's the truth. So that makes them virgins, okay? They're untouched. So the use of the term virgin there is a metaphor. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They were redeemed from among men, men, see? Being the first fruits unto the heavenly Father and to the Lamb. Yeah, the elect. So again, when Solomon, when this was said by uh, Solomon, this is a metaphor. This is not talking about actual women or actual virgins. Because of the savor of thy good ointments. What's that? That's a metaphor for this knowledge, this truth. The Apostle Paul used the same word, savor. He said this, this knowledge is likened unto a savor of life to those that are promised life and a savor of death to those that are promised death. Matter of fact, let me show you what... Uh, let's take the same word, savor. Now, that did, does he know that, that wacky-tacky Christian? Oh, hell no. Because the Holy Spirit ain't dealing with him like that. Savor. Savor. Okay. Savor. There we go. Second Corinthians 2 and 16. To the one we are a savor of death unto death. Yeah, this knowledge. This, this knowledge is, uh, uh, this truth that we have is, is, is a, this is what judges our people. And either you, you receive a favorable judgment, if you listen to the words and you do them, you receive a favorable judgment. But if you despise the word, you receive a horrific judgment. Proverbs 13 and 13, he that whosoever despises the word shall be destroyed. So the savor of death unto death is those that hear the word and they don't, they don't uh, adhere to it. They don't practice it. So eventually they will receive death. So we that teach this knowledge is truth, we are savor of death unto death. And to the other, the savor of life unto life, right? In, in other words, those that accept the word and uh, become involved in it, they will gain life. Those that don't, they will gain death. And who is sufficient for these things? There you go. So now you understand when it says in Song of Solomon, because of the savor of thy good ointments, right, the, the, the knowledge, this knowledge, this truth, which carries a pleasant savor, pleasant smell, Thy name is as ointment poured forth. Again, there's a scripture that says uh, that this knowledge is likened unto ointment. Ointment. All right. How's it, uh, what does it say? The oil of joy. This knowledge is also likened to oil of joy. So clearly you see these are metaphors here. All right. Uh, Therefore do the virgins love thee. And I have showed you Revelation 14 and 4 that the use of the term virgin is talking about men. The elect men of the nation of Israel, who who are well, who who are well informed, well informed of this knowledge, this truth. See, so for this guy to use, all right, right, for him to use as one of his precepts, songs, songs of Solomon one and three shows he does, he, he does, he doesn't even understand uh, metaphors. Songs of Solomon is not talking about an actual woman; it's a metaphor. Anyway, let's move on. Just just something that caught my eye. So I went to the very first scripture. And I already know what the Hebrew word is there. But this is where, you know, we play devil's advocate. Also, he looks like he shaves. Right? Look at that. He, he looks like he shaves. Let's go to Leviticus. Man, you should have never made that video, homeboy. Leviticus 19 and 27. Leviticus 19 and 27. Let's read that. It says, You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou shave or mar the corners of thy beard. Okay? You're not supposed to shave off your beard, man. Leviticus 21 and 5. Let's read that. Leviticus 21 and 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. 
nor make any cuttings in their flesh. scripture I think it's Luke 6 and 46 let's go to Luke 6 and 46 uh, yep Luke 6 and 46 and why call ye me Lord? Yeah, because you hear him speaking about Jesus Christ and like he's the ambassador of this Jesus Christ, you know. He's representing Jesus Christ. He's going to tell you how to live. He's going to tell you where you're going off. Well, let's read the scripture. Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Right, because our Lord, did he not keep the commandments? Did he not keep the law? Yes, he did. One of the laws is you're not supposed to shave off your beard, homeboy. Before you try to take, wait a minute, don't let me get that other scripture on you. Uh, moat. We got a moat. Uh, well, we don't even have a moat in our eye. And you're trying to take it out and you got a beam coming out of your, out of your eye. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Hey, Matthew 7 and 3. And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? which we don't even have a moat in our eye. We're teaching the truth. All right. Uh, Mary did have sex with Joseph. And, and out of that union came Yahweh Shai. And you're the one that don't understand it. You're the one that's trapped in delusion. But you're trying to say we got a moat in our eye. Well, why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam <laughs> that is in thine own eye? There you go. You, your, your doctrine is full of holes in it. And you're not even practicing what you're preaching there, homeboy. Come on now. You're not even practicing what you're preaching. Yeah, but look, look at you. This is where, you know, we play look devil. Look at you. You got a hat on your head, right? Your head's probably bald. I wouldn't doubt it. You have no beard on your face. You don't even know the name, the true name of the, of the son of the heavenly father. You're calling him Jesus Christ. Man, you are totally lost. Okay. Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say. The Lord said, which the Lord kept the law. You see, he told the man that asked him, what must I do to get in everlasting life? He told him to keep the commandments. One of the commandments is you shall not shave off the corner of your beard. All right. So Luke 6 and 47, whosoever com cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which build a house and dig deep. Had this guy dig deep? Nope. Nope. Because if he would have, if he would have really dug deep, he would have, he would have found out that indeed the Lord was born of Joseph and Mary. Okay. For goodness sakes, he couldn't even get the Hebrew right and the Greek right. Okay. He is like a, a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Right. He would have known the true name of that rock, which is Yahweh Shai. All right. But he that heareth and doeth not, like that guy, is like a man that is without a foundation. He has no foundation. Built a house upon the earth, upon sand. He's, he's built his house upon sand, That this guy here. This guy here, he's built his house upon sand. And it's only a matter of time till it crumble. He's going to find out he, he doesn't know the truth when all hell breaks loose. Uh, built in house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently. You wait when all hell breaks loose. And immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. <laughs> That's him. That's that guy right there. Let's get back to the video. Because he's not doing what the Lord said to do. There, but Why do I say that? Because he got, look, where's his beard? And he got a hat on his head, call himself prophesying and teaching the scriptures. Come on, man. This is where, you know, we play devil's advocate. All right, let's see if, let's entertain his 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 uh, argument. And let's say, if we go to this particular scripture and verse and we go to the Hebrew, is it going to use the word Ilama? 
let, 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 let's now let's find that out. Now, what word is being used? So you got damsel and then you have virgin. The word for damsel is na'ira, all right, for for damsel. So we know that this is in uh, Ilama. And this just basically simply means a girl, damsel, female servant, damsel, little girl, a, a, a young woman, marriageable young woman. All right, concubine, prostitute, maid, female attendant, female servant. So this is clearly not the word, all right, that's, that, that was used in Isaiah 7 and 14 to describe this particular virgin, all right? And here go the other word for virgin. And what is the Hebrew word? Bathwa Allah. That's right, Bathwa Allah, yep. All right, Bathwa Bata, Wala. Again, if Mary was this virgin that never had sex with Joseph and somehow she got pregnant, you would have seen the word Bathwa Allah there in the Hebrew for Isaiah 7.14. However, when you read it, you don't see that word. You see the word Ilama, which is a totally different word than Bathwala. Because indeed, Mary was a young woman. Yes, she was a young woman. Ilama means young woman, but she had sex. She was a young woman that had sex with Joseph and brought forth a seed, her firstborn son, which was Yahweh Shai. And there were more children to follow. It wasn't just Yahweh Shai. There were more sons and daughters to follow. And I can clearly read that in Scripture where... where the Jews said, look, we know, your, we know your father, we know your mother, we know your, si your brothers and your sisters. So how, how do you say that you are the bread which came down from heaven? That's what the Havashai said. They didn't want to accept it because they knew his family. They knew his father, mother, brothers and sisters. So come, come on, man. That's, stop it with this perpetual virgin nonsense. Enough, enough already. Oh, uh, Batawala. All right, Batawala. And it says, a virgin, right? It just simply say a virgin. But notice this is not the term for, this is not Ilama like he implied in, in, in the video. He gave the precepts. This was the first one. So you can see that this dude was not accurate at all, but he was very confident. He was very arrogant. That what he was speaking was uh, truth. These Christians, man, they... Again, talk, so mo talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. That's the scripture for him. They, they really embarrass themselves when they come up against the truth. Yes, they do. All right. A virgin, pure and unspotted, so-called as being separated and secluded from intercourse with men. All right, so if you're going to... That's Batwala, not Ailama. Use... The actual term for an actual virgin, the correct term would be Bathwa Allah. He would have a point if Isaiah uh, 7 and 14 uses Bathwa Allah. Exactly. Therefore, Matthew, the first chapter, it would actually, um, it would actually use. And there's no way Isaiah 7, 14 could have said Bathwa Allah because then it, it, Hebrews, and, Hebrews 7 and 14 couldn't be written. Our Lord couldn't have sprang out the tribe of Judah if he had no father. Now, you notice, right, let's, let's use an example, Melchizedek. Melchizedek didn't have no father or mother. They don't tell you what tribe Melchizedek came from because he just materialized. Melchizedek. He had no father, no mother. However, Yahweh Shai, look, Yahweh Shai had a father and mother. And Yahweh Shai came out of a tribe, the tribe of Judah. What tribe did Melchizedek come out of? The Bible don't tell you because he didn't come out of no tribe. He just materialized. Which, which shows you the Lord can do that. Okay? Which Melchizedek was really Yahweh Shai. Because Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Who's the true king of righteousness? Yahweh Shai. But the, the point is Melchizedek didn't have no father or mother. But Yahweh Shai had a father and a mother. And both came out the tribe of Judah. How about that? So stop it, man. Um, the, the, the Greek equivalent. 
which that's how you know when you go to uh, Matthew, the first chapter, and you read the the Greek, it uses the word Parthenos. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not the correct term, because even when you go to uh, the New Testament. Yeah, the correct term would have been Neanus. And the elder Apostle Ramlab, he went through that a long time ago. I mean, I might have slipped when I first started going into it. It's been a while since I had this information. You know, this is why we got to constantly go over it over and over again so so we know it cold. But the Spirit was able to work with me and I was able to bring the correct information. Okay? You got Parthenos in the Greek. You got Parthenos and Neanus. You got to know the difference between the two. In the Hebrew, it's Bathwala and um, Ila, Ilama, Ilama. You got to know the difference between the two to properly apply them in Scripture. Uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew New Testament. Now, this is uh, the book of Matthew, all right, the first chapter, and uh, we're going to go down to the 23rd verse. And this is this is the, the 23rd verse right here. Okay. Now, check this out. Elder Karadzazah is going to go into the Hebrew in the New Testament for uh, Matthew, I believe it said, he said Matthew, the first chapter. Now check this out. Pay attention. So we see it says uh, ha Hanaa, and then it says yeah. Ha Ailama. Ha, ha Ailama, right here. Ha, ha Ailama. Let me zoom. Let me let me uh check that out. Damn, can I zoom in? I can't even zoom in. I can zoom in. But uh, I'm, I, I highlight it right there on the screen. Yeah, man. Okay. There you go. Ailama. Ailama. Oops. And then it says, maiden, damsel, young woman, which simply that's exactly what it means. Now, again, if, if, if this Mary never had sex and yet somehow got pregnant, you would have seen the word Bathwala there in the New Testament. You would have seen the word Bathwala. You didn't see that. You saw Ailama because that is the correct word, a young woman. Ailama just means a young woman, and this woman had sex. This young woman, Mary, had sex with her husband, Joseph, which produced uh, the first line of progen progeny, which was Yahweh Shai, the firstborn son. Okay? So even in the New Testament Hebrew, it uses the, the, the correct Hebrew word, which is Ailama. Exactly. It doesn't use the word Bathwa'ala. Beautiful. You see that? Did you catch that? It doesn't use the word bathwala because that's the actual word for virgin. Woman's never had sex. A young woman's never had sex. Which, by the way, that was the most idealized uh, women back then. That was the that was the ideal women that men wanted back then. A bathwala, a woman that's never been touched by any man. A complete virgin, and they were usually young. Back then, we got them young. We're talking 12, 13, 14. We got them young, even. Uh, you go back 150 years ago, men were marrying women that young. As soon as they were able to have their period, that was a sign they were able to bear children. And back then, it was usually 12, 13. Now they get their period younger because this this world is all fucked up, man. The food that we eat, everything is... Look, like the scripture says, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay. That's what the wicked elite of Esau has done. They've turned everything upside down. The food, you, you name it, the air. It's, that's why you have a got to come and destroy the society. That's the only answer. This is why you got to go into the Hebrew. All right. So now with it. Hear that IUIC? That's why you got to go into the Hebrew. Okay. There's certain scriptures where you have to go into the Hebrew to break it down. Another uh, example is Acts 12 and 4. Where it speaks about Easter. We didn't. We didn't keep no Easter. Easter was a pagan celebration. So why is Acts 12 and 4 mentioned in Easter? As This is where you go into the Hebrew to find out the the, the uh, original word that was there. In, in the Greek, you have to go to the Greek or the Hebrew. In the in the, in the the uh, Greek, it would have been uh, Pascha. Pascha. In the Hebrew, it would have been Pasach. Pasach. Okay? That's the word that should be there. All right, for Acts 12 and 4. So that shows you the importance of knowing your Hebrew and your Greek.
it makes sense. Which so which proper term should be used? Which uh, slaki? Which proper word should be used? That's right. Is it ilama or is it bafwa Allah? Now we go to Isaiah. The word that should be there is ilama, young woman, not bafwa Allah, because Mary did have sex. Mary got impregnated by her husband Joseph. They got busy. They were knocking boots. Okay, Joseph couldn't wait to have, as a matter of fact, Joseph didn't even wait for the ceremony. He couldn't wait to lay hands on Mary. Mary had to be a fine little thing, man. And Joseph said, man, this is my woman. Indeed so. Even the angel confirmed that, told Joseph, fear not to take Mary to be thy wife. Because Joseph had already had sex with her. And uh, he, he was supposed to follow the ritual. There was a marriage. <laughs> These wacky tacky Christians, they're ignorant and arrogant in their stupidity and, and, and uh, ignorance. There was a, a ceremony that took place before the man laid down with the woman. You had the thing with the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the token of virginity. All right. There was none of that with Joseph and Mary. Joseph just got right to business. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Seven. And you get your answer. Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's right. Right? And then the Hebrew word. And that son had a nationality. That son had a tribe. He came out of a tribe. Because his father had a nationality, his father came out of a tribe. What tribe? The tribe of Judah. You can't, man, come on. You wacky-tacky Christians, you need to pack it in with this virgin birth nonsense. I'm telling you, the, the shit's old. It's played, and it doesn't make sense. And by the way, it's, it, when you teach that, you, you, are, you are, not only are you bringing confusion, you are endorsing adultery, because that's clearly adultery. The only one that was supposed to pop Mary was her husband, Joseph. That's it. No foreign entity, no angel, none of that. The only one that was supposed to pop Mary so she could get pregnant was Joseph. That's it. Musa, as it is written, the Heavenly Father is not the author of confusion. What? I Lama. So, either the, the, uh, the prophets who, who, who wrote this in the Hebrew... Either they're wrong, or you wrong. No, I, I, and he's wrong. <laughs> he's wrong because he doesn't understand the Hebrew and the Greek. You know, he he thought this was an eloquent and and a, a profound uh, argument to make, not really understanding the 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 the, uh, the etymology and going into the original text using. The original language. He tried to go there, but he failed miserably, as you yeah, as you just yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let, let's go back and get that again. Conceive, and it would tell you that this Hebrew word for virgin is alma, which really only means. And he didn't even pronounce it correctly. It's ilama, ilama. A young woman, a woman of marriageable age, and so Christ wasn't. And Matthew was quoting who? He was quoting from Isaiah, Isaiah 7 and 14, Isaiah which was written 14. in what language first? Hebrew. It was in the Hebrew. Right. Come on, my man. <laughs> the, the law and the prophets was written in Hebrew. Like the so-called Jamaicans would say, you're not ready, man. You're not ready. <laughs> you're not ready, man. This man here, you're not ready. Go back and try again. You're not ready. Hebrew. So you go to the original source. You go to it. What, what, what does it say in the Hebrew? Now, I'm sure when you go to the Greek, you go to, you, you, you read the, um, the Greek Old Testament, I'm pretty sure it, it's going to use Parthenos. Yeah, uh, this is Parthenos right here. But is that the correct term? Nah, the correct term. Sure. So obviously, it uses Parthenos for I Lama and for Bafwa Allah, which that, that that's that's confusion. 
Yeah, that's incorrect. Exactly. So should be Neanderthal. There's clearly you can see you can detect that error if you if 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 you're spiritual. It you can see the error of the translations. Should be Neanderthal. All right. It's yeah. not supposed to use the term uh, Parthenon. Yeah, it should be Neanderthal, which I showed you. Let me see if uh, the Holy Spirit have him. I'm pretty sure it didn't have Elder Elder Karadza bring it out. Bring it if out. If the word it being used is uh, Al Lama. Which simply means a, a a young woman of a marriageable age. Yeah, the Greek word. Bob Waala is talking about an actual virgin woman. A the young Greek woman that hasn't been be touched. Nianus. Nianus. So, this is why you have to, you know, go into the meaning of these words and actually study. You know, because these Christians, they're trying to study and they're trying to go into the original language. They wasn't doing this at first. Nope. We forced them to, to, to do their research. And they still can't and do that. And now right. all of a sudden they're confident to try to. Uh, and they still can't do that right. Come against uh, what we teach, and they're still failing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is an embarrassing. This is a uh, another embarrassing moment for for you Christians, man. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit got to work with you for you to be able to do it correctly. All right. It's a little thing called the Holy Spirit. You really don't know what the hell y'all talking about. And it wouldn't make sense of the Lord being of a, a, a virgin, an actual virgin, when he's supposed to be of the uh, a son of, he's supposed to be the, uh, the root and offspring of, of David. He's supposed to. Exactly. The root and offspring of David, which was of the tribe of Judah. For for his mother to be a for his mother to be a virgin who never had sex with any man yet he was conceived doesn't make any sense. It's confusion because it clearly tells you the Lord came out the tribe of Judah. There's a scripture where he said, I believe it's in Revelation, I am the root and offspring of David, root and offspring. Where did Mary acquire that sperm from? From Joseph. Joseph himself was of the root and offspring of David. Scripture clearly tells us that. So yes, Joseph did impregnate Mary and, and brought forth a firstborn son, Yahweh Shai. <sighs> man, y'all need to stop with that virgin crap, man. You wacky-tacky Christians. You don't know how stupid you look when you go into that nonsense. Be the actual son, all right, the, 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 the seed of David. Right. Which his father happened to be of that line. Yeah. That that would be the only logical way of explaining how he would be of the line of uh, uh, of David. Right, of the tribe of the tribe of Judah. The conquering line of the tribe of Judah, right? <laughs> of the tribe of Judah. There you go. So this dude was clearly wrong, all right? Hey, let me uh, get this real quick. Let me see if he goes into the Greek for, uh, <clears throat> for um... yeah, this is uh, Proverbs twenty-eight twenty-six. It says, "He that trusteth in his own heart is a." Yeah, so the Greek word there should have been Neanus instead of Parthenos. Parthenos is the actual virgin. I even showed that to you. Neanus is a young woman. You got Neanus, you got Parthenos. You got Bathwala, you got Ilama. You got to know, you got to be able to discern between those words. Fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. You know, so you're not supposed to, you know, trust your own opinion. So All right, we, 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 we trust upon the spirit. The spirit is what gives us the understanding which a lot of these Christians don't have. That's Job 32 and 8, but there's a spirit. That's, that's what he just said there. Let's read that in Scripture. Job 32 and 8. It says this, But there's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So that guy, this guy here, is clear he doesn't have the inspiration of the Almighty. Because if he did, he'd have a beard on his face. He wouldn't have that hat on his head. He wouldn't be calling on Jesus Christ. There's so much that he doesn't know. 
But he has that zeal, though, but it's not according to knowledge. Let's read that. I bet him to have a zeal, you know, and because of that, he's going to lose his life because of that if he doesn't repent. Romans 11, what is that, 10? Romans 10. Yeah, there you go. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel, and he's an Israelite. This guy here is an Israelite, but he doesn't know it. He's trying to correct our doctrine with some silly Jesus Christ. Come on, dude, stop it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record, like this guy here, we bear him record, right? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Heavenly Father, but not according to knowledge. That's this guy here. Remember what it said in 1 Samuel. Don't be arrogant. The Heavenly Father's a power of knowledge. For they be an ignorant of the Most High's righteousness, like that guy, and going about to establish their own righteousness, right? Their own doctrine, complete with Jesus Christ, which didn't exist. <laughs> All right, the term Jesus Christ didn't exist. It would have been either Jesus Christos or Yahweh Mashiach. All right, Yahweh Mashiach in the Hebrew or Jesus Christos in the Greek. Come on, man, stop it. All right, and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. There you go. That's these guys right here. Which a lot of these Christians don't have. So, you know, I had to, uh, you know, make a follow-up response video to this right here. This Glad. dude don't know what he's talking about. Glad you did. As, as, and it's typical for a lot of these Christians. Yep. You know? That's right. So, uh, you know, you brothers, you know, you brothers out there, you encounter a Christian and they try to make this talking point, man, just go into the Hebrew. Oh, you're uh, taking them into deep waters, you do that. Go into the Hebrew, go into the Greek. You, they, <laughs> you're taking them into deep waters. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. Next one.